After my shop tour video, I got a few questions about two of my machines in particular. One was my table saw, and the other was my lathe. So I figured I would do a separate video on each one of those machines to answer some of the questions that came up. This is my Oliver 260 dual arbor sliding table saw. It was manufactured in 1942 for the uh, U.S. Navy. It went into one of their pattern shops. I got the saw, oh, probably about a year and a half ago now, from a fellow down in Texas. He had a stair shop and uh, abused this saw pretty nicely. So when I got it back up to Indiana, I I did a quick disassembly, cleaned everything, replaced the bearings, and threw it back together. And it works uh, very, very nicely. It does not have the original fence. This is actually a Tanowitz fence. But it's uh, similar to the original Oliver fence in that it is a, a rack and pinion configuration. It's uh, located on the table with two tapered pins. And it will afford me about uh, 30 inches of cross cuts. Uh, capacity which is uh, rather sufficient for the work I do. The machine is uh, 440 volt three phase so I run it off my 220 volt uh, rotary phase converter and these uh, two transformers to step up the voltage. The machine did not come with the quadrant when I the quadrant gauge here on the table when I originally picked it up. I'd do uh, quite a bit of searching to find one of these, but it is a, a original Oliver quadrant. It's uh, located on the table, the sliding table, via tapered pins once again, like the fence, and it can be locked in positively at uh, 90 degrees, uh, 22, 5, 30, 45 and about anywhere in between via the uh, table clamp knob right there I have on the fence. Um, you can attach auxiliary faces to it which I find pretty useful. This face here I use for a cross cutting less than three feet. I have a couple larger ones I store down there and uh, I attach it to the quadrant uh, via these quarter twenty uh, thumb screws, or these, I guess you call them thumb screws, and uh, threaded inserts in the wood. This particular fence I use for cutting 90 degrees, or if I want full support at a uh, 45 degree miter, I'll slide it over to the second set of holes here, clamp it back down. Seconds. This is a little difficult to do with the camera. And then at 45 degrees, it uh, fully supports the wood for miter cuts. That could also be useful for attaching to a standard miter gauge, but. <clears throat> Down below. The two motors can house, or the two arbors can house uh, two 16-inch blades, or uh, one 20-inch blade for a uh, overall cutting height of six inches. Although I find the uh, four inches that I get with the 16-inch uh, blade more than enough for most situations. Much more than that, and it could get a little scary, but. I guess it could be useful from time to time. The saw also came uh, from the factory with a kind of unusual feature. It has a full two and a half inch dado arbor, which were not which was not standard on these saws. So this must have been ordered custom for that uh, particular pattern shop. And you can put up to a two and a half inch stack dado on the arbor, which uh, once again would be a little terrifying, but. Um, in any case, it's kind of a neat feature. The two arbors effectively rotate around a uh, center yoke to raise and lower the blades. 
for being a, an 80 year old saw, it's uh, still incredibly smooth. It's a quick, easy transition to go from ripping to cross cutting. I guess I'll do a couple quick cuts with the machine and let you see how she performs. Well, old Mr. Johnson had troubles all his own. He had an old yellow cat that wouldn't leave home. Tried everything he knew to get the cat to stay away. Even took him up to Canada and told him for to stay. But the cat came back the very next day. Thought he was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. Well, they gave a boy a dollar for to set the cat afloat, and he took him up the river in a sack in a boat. Now the fishing it was fine till the news got around that the boat was missing and the boy was drowned. But the cat came back the very next day. They thought he was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. Well, the farmer on the corner said he chewed him on sight. He loaded up his gun full of rocks and dynamite. The explosion was heard all over town. Little pieces of the man was all that they found. But the kitty came back the very next day. Thought he was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. Well, they gave him to a man going up in the balloon and they told him for to leave him with the man in the moon. The balloon had busted back to earth that head. Seven miles away, they picked the man up dead. But the kitty came back the very next day. They thought he was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. Well, they finally found the way this cat for to fix. They put him in an orange crate on Route 66. Come a 10-ton truck with a 20-ton load, scattered pieces of the orange crate all down the road. But the cat came back the very next day. They thought he was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. Then they took him to the shop where the meat was ground and they dropped him in the hopper when the butcher wasn't round. Well, the cat disappeared with a blood curdling shriek and the town's meat tasted furry for a week. But the cat came back the very next day. They thought he was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. Then they took him to Cape Canaveral and they put him in a place. They shot him in a rocket going way out in space. And they finally thought the cat was out of human reach. Next day they got a call from Miami Beach and the cat came back the very next day. They thought he was a goner but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away.